Israeli occupation continues to strike Gaza as international pressure mounts to protect civilians. British military reports an explosion on coast of Yemen at Bab and Memba. United Nations accuses Houthis of committing violations against children. Welcome to Yemen Today TV. This is the English news for me, Shazad Abdel the Israeli occupation targeted the homes of citizens in Nusayrat camp in central Gaza, which caused the death and injury of dozens. The Israeli occupation resumed its attacks on the Gaza Strip after failing to renew a seven-day truce with the Palestinian factions. This report has more details. Israel carried out bombardments in Gaza on Sunday as international calls mounted for greater protection of civilians and the renewal of an expired truce with Palestinian resistance. Israel said it has conducted more than 400 strikes in Gaza since the ceasefire collapsed. Moreover, its strikes hit in Lusayrat camp in central Gaza late Saturday, killing at least 13 people, according to the official Palestinian news. United States Vice President Charlie revoked Israel, as too many innocent Palestinians have been killed, and she mentioned that the scale of civilian suffering and the images coming from Gaza are devastating. According to the United Nations, an estimated 1.7 million people in Gaza have been killed and displaced by eight weeks of war. Gazans are short of food, water, and other essentials, and many homes have been destroyed. UN agencies have declared a humanitarian catastrophe, although some aid trucks did arrive on Saturday. The Palestine Red Crescent Society said Israel had told NGOs not to bring aid convoys across the Rafah border from Egypt after the truce expired. But on Saturday, the charity said its Egyptian colleagues had managed to send over a number of trucks. A week-long truce, brokered with the help of Qatar and backed by Egypt and the United States, led to the release of 80 Israeli hostages, in exchange for 240 Palestinian prisoners. But that truce collapsed, with both sides blaming each other for violating its conditions. Israel vowed to eliminate Gaza and unleashed an air and ground campaign that has killed more than 15,000 people, also mostly civilians. Israel's air, naval and ground forces have attacked more than 400 targets in Gaza since the end of the ceasefire and warplanes hit more than 50 targets in an extensive attack in Khan Yunis area. In a statement, the Israeli government threatened that the truce agreement would not mean the end of the war in Gaza and they would continue the war in order to complete the elimination of the Palestinian resistance and ensure that there would be no new resistance in Gaza. The Israeli army announced that two more of them died in battles with Hamas in the Gaza Strip. In addition, this brings the death toll of Israeli soldiers killed in ground battles in Gaza to 72 according to the army. Since the beginning of the war on October 7, the Israeli army announced the death of 398 soldiers, including 72 in Gaza. The British army announced that a possible explosion happened on a main shipping route in the Red Sea on the coast of Yemen. Also, the British army issued a brief warning to shipping companies that the incident happened in Bab al-Mandab, which separates East Africa from the Arabian Peninsula. The British authorities said that the drone activity had also been reported in the region. هذه هي حارتي يا جماعة الخير. هذا المكان اللي أنا كنت عايش فيه. كل الذكريات، كل الطموحات، كل الأحلام اللي بنيتها في هذا المنطقة، زي ما تشوفين، كلها اختفت. بطل في اثار ملامح للحياه انتوا شايفين فيش ولا حجر واقف على حجر فيش ولا مكان واقف لسه لكن مع ذلك لسه الامل موجود لسه ان شاء الله حنعمر كل هذه المنطقه باذن الله شايفين كل المباني هذه اللي دمرت ان شاء الله حنرجع نبنيها من اول وجديد والاحتلال ما حيقدر يمنعنا وما حيقدر انه يخلي معنوياتنا تنزل ان شاء الله صامدين وثابتين وحنعمر حنعمر
The new annual report of the group of experts of the UN Security Council Sanctions Committee accused the Houthis of continuing to smuggle weapons, torturing detainees and raping children. This report has more details. The United Nations panel of experts documented a broad spectrum of conflict-related violations of children's rights perpetrated by the Houthi rebels. The panel verified an increasing trend in children being subjected to military propaganda and training, particularly in the context of the summer camps, which in 2023 reportedly involved more than one million Yemeni children living in Houthi-controlled areas. While positive steps were allegedly taken by the Houthis upon the signature of an act plan with the United Nations in April 2022 to end and prevent this violation, the evidence gathered shows the opposite trend. The summer camps in Houthi-controlled areas took place between May and June this year in nine governorates, where boys between 13 and 17 years old spent about 45 days without returning home. Only teachers are allowed to gain access to the residential areas where the military training is reportedly taking place. The panel documented that children as young as 10 years old are exposed to military training. The Houthis are also given monetary incentives to promote a higher attendance in the summer camps by waiving the registration fees for the next school year. Children are often recruited through coercion and threats to their families. Credible reports received by the panel indicate that families living in Houthi-controlled areas that refuse to send their children to join Houthi forces or that are openly not aligned with Houthi ideology are subjected to retribution. These include the removal of the family from the lists of beneficiaries entitled to humanitarian assistance and the abduction and detention of the concerned children who are subjected to various forms of ill treatment, including sexual violence. In other cases, children are forcibly taken to the closed summer camps and subsequently sent to the front lines. The executive unit for the management of displaced people in Marib called to improve the situation of IDPs in winter. The unit said 26,000 shelters must be provided in winter to ease the suffering of the displaced families. It added that the IDPs in Marib need more than 100,000 bags and winter clothes, in addition to improving emergency and housing in the winter. A citizen was killed by the explosion of a mine left by the terrorist Houthi Moshe in Hudayda, western Yemen. In last November, the La Yemeni Landmine Observatory documented 15 casualties among civilians as a result of landmines planted by the Houthis. It called on the international community to pressure the rebels on handing over the maps of the landmines. An oil pipeline in Shabwa, eastern Yemen, was blown up by gunmen. In addition, local sources said the militants blew up the crude oil pipeline in Al Alam oil field in Shabwa. Clashes broke out in the area between a force working to protect the crude oil pipeline and the unknown militants. Coming next in the news. Yemeni antiquities are looted and sold in global auctions.
Welcome back. The Houthi group in Yemen threatened the male and female members of the teachers' club with detention for protesting over seven-year salary cuts. The group's security services have been involved in threatening teachers and their families. The teachers' union vowed to continue their strike despite the threat. This report has more details. The Houthi group in Sana'a has threatened the leadership of the teachers' club with imprisonment for leading protests demanding the payment of teachers' salaries that have been cut for over seven years. The group's security services have been involved in threatening the club's leadership and teachers participating in the general strike. Some teachers have been arrested and threatened with imprisonment if they continued their activity. Female teachers have also been threatened with arresting their relatives if they continue participating in the club and calling for the strike. The club's vice president, Hayat Munasur, has pledged to continue in her possession and participate in the strike, stating that any teachers belonging to the club is not a crime and threatening female teachers is criminalized by the Yemeni law. The Houthi public prosecutor has denied the existence of an assignment to the group's security services to threaten members of the teachers' club and demand their withdrawal. Yemeni teachers have been demanding that Houthis pay their salaries in line with the leaders and formations that rule in their areas. Some teachers have been summoned to the Houthi security and intelligence service, claiming it's gagging, blackmail and a public threat. The education office in Sana'a has summoned leader Hayat Munasr, accusing her of working to divide the ranks of workers in the education sector due to her demand for salaries. The media committee of the teachers' club has turned the investigation session into a trial for the office leadership, as demanding salaries is a legal right. Tens of thousands of teachers are obliged to work without receiving salaries, leading to a four-month uprising, demanding equal pay for all public sector's employees. In recent years, the phenomena of archaeological sites selling their antiquities and smuggling them abroad has increased. This phenomena caused a great disturbance in Yemeni circles, demanding serious action and the strict restrictions to limit this. This report has more details. A Yemeni archaeology expert has revealed that several Yemeni artifacts have been put up for public auctions in Western countries over the past two weeks. Abdullah Mohsin, a Yemeni specialist in tracking and monitoring smuggled antiquities, has confirmed that a range of artifacts was put up for sale in international auctions on November 15 to November 27. Among the showcased items were a bronze high relief dating back to the 5th century, a rare female figure with inscriptions in cursive script, and a rare 1st century artifact. Additionally, a collection of artifacts, sculptures, and antiquities, estimated to be around 5,000 years old, was featured. According to Mohsen, an archaeological tomb was also relocated from al Jauf Governorate to Shabwa Governorate, and subsequently it was flown to France. Mohsen emphasized that this incident serves as a genuine illustration of the ease with which antiquities can be smuggled out of Yemen. This reinforces speculations around the sale of these artifacts occurring wholesale from their discovery sites rather than through retail transactions. Mohsen, through a series of Facebook posts, sheds light on the sale of a rare headstone in Toronto, Canada on November 17. In the posts, he explains that the artifact dates back to the prehistoric period and is part of Yemen's antiquities from Sabah or Kataban. 
The headstone was presented for sale in an auction after being acquired from an exhibition in New York on May 15, 2008 for approximately $40,000. This revelation comes at a time when multiple sources confirm the ongoing looting and random diggings in several archaeological sites scattered across South Iran areas in Yemen. These activities are driven by gangs and antiquities mafias, supported by key Houthi leaders. Nearly 12 out of 20 museums, as reported by a former official from the General Authority for Antiquities and Museums in Sanha, have fallen victim to systematic looting, destruction and devastation, orchestrated by the Houthis. In December the 3rd, the world revives International Day of Persons with Disabilities. Yemen have witnessed an increase in the number of disabled due to the conflict. The support has more details. On the International Day of Disabled People, thousands of Yemenis remain vulnerable to conflict that leads to permanent or temporary disability. Handicap International Organization for the Disabled warned of the conditions of people with disabilities in the war-torn country. The number of people with disabilities in the country was estimated at 3 million before the war. But with the conflict, the current number is estimated at 4.5 million, although the actual number is expected to be much higher. The armed conflict revealed two main problems faced by persons with disabilities in Yemen, which are lack of protection and lack of attention. The organization said in terms of the direct consequences of the war, there are a large number of amputations, as a result of the widespread use of explosive weapons in populated areas, including artillery, airstrikes, mines, and stray bullets. According to a report by the International Committee of the Red Cross, about 6,000 civilians were disabled as a result of armed hostilities, just one year after the start of the conflict. The organization revealed that people with disabilities are among those most affected by the ongoing war in Yemen. They are also particularly affected by the destruction of basic infrastructure, such as hospitals, which has severely restricted access to health services and humanitarian assistance. At the same time, the resources available to this group have decreased significantly over the past years. Here is a reminder of the main headlines. Israeli occupation continues to strike Gaza as international pressure mounts to protect civilians. British military reports an explosion on coast of Yemen at Bab el Mandal. United Nations accuses Houthis of committing violations against children. This is the end of the news. Thank you for watching.